Hi, this is Pete Madsen for Acoustic Guitar, and I'm here to talk and play my lesson on Bucka White. Booker T. Washington White, otherwise known as Bucka, was a uh, Mississippi blues player. He uh, m made his first recordings around 1930. He then spent some time at the infamous Parchman Farm Penitentiary, where he was recorded by musicologist and folklorist John Lomax. Um, after serving time, he was rediscovered by the guitarist John Fahey and ended up recording for his Tacoma Records label. I first heard uh, Buck White, like a lot of folks did, uh, via YouTube. I saw a lot of uh, his videos that had uh, been recorded in black and white. Um, and was just impressed with the sheer drive of his playing. He, he played a lot in open tunings, open G, open D, and open D minor. And there was the alternating bass and the uh, serious chug of his playing, chug, 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 like a train going. Uh, interestingly enough, his father was a railroad worker, and uh, he was probably inspired, I'm guessing, but in his early childhood by the sound of the trains. Um, so you'll hear a lot of that chug chug in his playing. Uh, we're going to cover two aspects of Bucka White's playing. Open G, in which he played songs like Fixin' the Die and Po' Boy. And then we're going to go to Open D minor, which interestingly enough he used in a different way than other players who played in Open D minor like Skip James and Robert Johnson. So we'll take a look at that, see how he, he handled Open D minor. Uh, first off, we're going to start off in open G tuning. So to get to open G from standard tuning, I've lowered the sixth string down from E a whole step to D. I've then lowered the fifth string down a whole step from A to G. The fourth string stays a D. The third string stays a G. The second string stays a B. And finally, the first string gets tuned down a whole step from E to D. You've now tuned your guitar uh, from standard tuning down to open G tuning. In the recordings, when you listen to Bucka White play, he may not be tuned exactly to concert pitch. He might be a little bit lower. In fact, the first couple of exercises, exercise one and two, uh, were recorded a little bit later and the, the pitches were down much lower. But just for the sake of, of brevity, we're gonna stay in open G pitch to concert pitch. Okay. Okay, this first example is from Fixin' the Die. One, two, three, four. <coughs> Now, uh, I'm doing an alternating bass with my thumb. Most of the examples we'll do today, whether they be an open G or open D minor, will have an alternating bass. Um, okay, so the thing to also keep in mind with uh, Bucka White's playing is he played a pretty fast tempo, so... Once you get this stuff going, that's where the speed you're going to want to aim for is somewhere between 160 and 190 beats per minute, so it's pretty quick. Example two uses uh, this pattern, one, two, three, four. <laughs> That's also from Fixin' the Die Blues. Uh, you can play these two, uh, example one, example two, in conjunction. <laughs> example three, also from Fixin' the Die Blues, goes like this.
descending run on the fourth string, down to the second fret. Okay, so we're starting to get into a little bit of slide playing here. Uh, Buck White wore his slide on his pinky. Uh, I believe he used a steel slide. I'm using a ceramic slide. Uh, the idea with slide, uh, which you probably know by now, is you target the fret wire. So uh, when you're playing slide, you don't want to play in between the frets. In order to get the proper intonation, you want to be right at the fret wire. Example four is from the song Poor Boy. It goes like this. We're now playing full chords with the slide. We have a G chord here up at the 12th fret. And then uh, Bucca would play now, a little descending line going from the 15th fret to the 12th fret to the 10th fret, which then lead us to the four chord, which would be C. And then to the five chord, D. So I'll play full chords at the 12th fret my one chord, C chord, the four chord at the fifth fret, and D, the five chord at the seventh fret. Play that again. Okay, so those are the examples in open G. Okay, we are now in open D minor tuning, sometimes called cross note tuning. Uh, if we're coming from G tuning, you will keep the, the three strings that were Ds, the sixth, the fourth, and the first string will remain D. So this is D. I uh, move my fifth string back from G to A, whole step up to A. Uh, D again on the fourth string. The third string has been moved down a whole step from uh, G, excuse me, uh, yeah, from G to F. And then the second string has been moved from B to A, down a whole step to A. And then, of course, the first string is D. So now you've tuned your guitar to a uh, minor chord. Interestingly enough, when Bucket White played in D minor tuning, he didn't emphasize the minor tonality. In fact, what he would do would be to uh, actually change his F note into an F sharp so that his uh, rhythms actually had more of a major sound. The uh, example five and six uh, are similar to ideas he would play in Jitterbug Swing and Aberdeen, Mississippi Blues. Um, uh, this is uh, example five. He starts off with this hammer on. Alternating bass. He then comes down and plays the second fret on both the uh, third and the second string. And then he got this really nice bouncy rhythm. Example six, uh, also similar to something he would play in Jitterbug Swing and Aberdeen, Mississippi Blues. Starts off is with the finger down on that uh, third string first fret. And then 
goes back into that shape on the second fret on the third and second string. Okay. Um, of course, so you would play those at pretty quick tempos too. So um, around 180 beats per minute. So it's pretty quick. Example seven, um, he gets away from the alternating bass a little bit here. Um, the bass is a little bit more erratic, although it does all fall on the beat. Uh, this is from Sikkim Dogs, and it goes like this. <laughs> that same idea hammering on from the F to the F sharp to give it a major sound. Uh, example 8 sort of represents more of the flashy aspect of Bucket White's playing. Uh, he would do this in Aberdeen Mississippi Blues and it involves tapping the guitar. Let me play it for you and show you exactly what he's doing. <laughs> So he's tapping between the strings of the guitar and the body of the guitar. But the thing that really keeps this going is he's hammering on, hammering on and pulling off on the fifth string at the second fret. So if you just keep that going, really nice little flourish and uh, he would actually play that underneath the vocal line, which was pretty cool sounding. So check it out. If you have a chance, go to YouTube, look up Bucket White Aberdeen Mississippi Blues, and you will, um, you'll see him doing that. Um, he also did a lot of slide playing in um, this open D minor tuning. And the, the slide playing really kind of focused on the, the first string. So example nine um, is similar to something he would play like in Jitterbug Swing. So he's, he's sliding up on that first string, the second to fourth fret, then to the seventh fret, uh, and then backwards from two, uh, from four to two, to the open string, and he plays that second string, second fret. Uh, that's sort of the first half of the phrase. The second half of the phrase goes up to the ninth fret. All the while you're keeping the alternating bass going. Oftentimes a uh, bucket would go back and forth between the high, higher frets and the lower frets. So example 10 gives an example of that. Okay. Again, fast tempos, so um, keep that in mind. Example 11 is something I call June bug swing, not to be confused with jitter bug swing. But it's using uh, some of the ideas that uh, Bucka White would play in uh, open D minor tuning to create something a little different. Uh, so let me play this one for you and I'll break it down. Let's look at uh, what, what went on in there. Um, the first part, uh, the first two bars, we're 
using those ideas that where we uh, hammered on into the third string. And then using that second fret again on the third and the second string. Uh, then uh, we go into... Uh, That was the idea that we used uh, from the Aberdeen, Mississippi blues. I'm adding a couple of strings into the mix. I'm keeping my first finger on that third string first fret. So when I'm tapping the strings, I'm actually hitting four strings rather than just two. Come back to the original groove. We then get into the slide part of the song. Okay, so I'm starting off on the seventh fret, then to the ninth fret, four to second fret, second fret. Next section, we come up to the 12th fret. So we play the two slide sections again. One, two, three, four. back in the original rhythm and sort of repeat the last part of that phrase. And finish it off there. Let me play through the whole thing one more time. This is example 11. It helps if you're playing in Bucka White style to have a resonator guitar. Uh, you'll notice, I think, all those clips I've seen of him, he's playing a resonator, a national resonator style guitar. I have a single cone here. You can get resonator guitars with various cone configurations, but it kind of gives it that nice, brash, loud driving sound. Uh, of course, if you can't afford to go out and buy a resonator guitar, you can always go out and you, mean, you could always use a regular guitar. Um, and tune it down and you still do the tapping if you were to do this on a regular acoustic guitar the tapping part you tap here and somewhere uh, behind the sound hole of your guitar kind of where the bracing is so you don't do any damage to your guitar um, well, that's it from here I hope you enjoy this Buck of White lesson uh, so th this is remember this is in D minor tuning and uh, it's Bucca did some really interesting things with D minor tuning creating this major tonality uh, with the uh, hammering on here. You can explore that idea a, a lot on your own and I think get some really interesting ideas going on. Thanks.